Hey, it's Mark Terrell from the Short Coat Podcast at the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine. And this is the Short Coat Short on how to get the residency you want, the first in a series of quick sit downs with residency program staff and the residents themselves. Now remember, before we get started, the info we're giving you is just a start. Be sure to know the programs you're applying to and what they want specifically, and get help from your mentors, deans, trusted advisors, and what have you. And if you have any questions we can answer, definitely call the number below or ask in the comments and we'll see what we can do. And a special thanks to our own Medical Student Counseling Center for setting this up with us. Hi, I'm Nandita Agarwal, I'm an M4, and I'm here with Billy Rudin, Education Coordinator for General Surgery, and Dr. Tony Swatek, General Surgery Resident. Dr. Swatek, can you briefly tell us about how you chose a career in general surgery? Yeah, I was actually a late switcher. Um, it was my surgery rotation. It was my last rotation of third year, kind of right before the applications were due. And I was um, <clears throat> making a beeline for the pathology world. <laughs> but um, I had a really great experience with more than one surgeon at uh, my medical school. And um, I knew I knew when I did it that that's what I wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to experience that sooner. And it was um, a little bit difficult to switch from a going towards the pathology route, which is a wonderful career, um, to the surgical route, which is a better career. Um, but uh, the, the people that I worked with were by far the most important um, in my decision to go into surgery. And again, you know, having, having decided a little bit later than most people, um, you can imagine the impact that those people had on my decision. They were um, outstanding. Um, yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what stands out from your experience applying and interviewing? Um, again, uh, it'll go back to the people, I think. Um, the interviewing process, you, you get to meet uh, a lot of different people in a lot of different, um, at a lot of different levels in their training, whether it be uh, the other medical students that you're uh, interviewing with, and you'll see some of the same people throughout your different interviews or the uh, different levels of uh, residents, fellows, uh, junior staff, senior staff, um, coordinators, um, everyone that you, you meet is, is, it's great. You know, you should take uh, time to get to know them. Um, yeah, I think the people definitely stand out. And when you're going to these places, I mean, there are places that are better um, than others, but I wouldn't say that that's, um, you shouldn't take it like that. It's, it's better, there's a place that's better for you. And I think a lot of what makes that place better for you or another applicant is the people that are there. And um, I, would, I would spend my time getting to know the people around you. Um, it'll just make it more enjoyable. It'll, your true self will come out and that's probably what you want to happen on your interviews. Uh, Billy, as a residency coordinator, uh, what qualities do you think distinguish different applicants? There's probably a lot of different qualities and their application is going to show a lot of different things that reflect who they are and, and what they've done in their uh, medical student career. Um, <clears throat> it's it's kind of hard to say. I think basically personality is probably going to be a really important thing once you get the interview. Um, make sure that you're able to carry a conversation comfortably. Anything that you put in your application, make sure you can talk about. And uh, don't try to inflate yourself. I think just be who you are. And uh, it'll, it'll show through really well uh, if you do try to inflate yourself inappropriately. What additional advice uh, would either one of you have for interviewing? Um, I would say uh, my piece of advice is to enjoy yourself. Um, yeah. Because you don't get to do this very often. Yeah. You will, again, you know, as you go off and interview for other jobs or fellowships or whatever, but um, it can be um, enjoyable and it can be not enjoyable and like any, any experience. It's what you are going to make of it that is it's going to stand out. Um, and it's your one and only opportunity to do this, so hopefully. Hopefully, like, everybody matches and, and it's your one and only opportunity. And this is going to be the most important opportunity for you to find the place for you money can can make it unenjoyable so so be wise mm -hmm. um, if you can stay at a friend's house um, or somebody you know in college or drive somewhere that's cheaper than flying those sort of things can go um, a long way to 
to save a penny and um for certain people that can be very stressful um and it, and it can um, help you out to be uh, a little more frugal um carpooling you know I, I drove a few people back to save them some money and they always give you a little extra gas money or something but we'd Did probably we'd probably not be doing our job if we didn't at least mention dressing a little bit dressing <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna ask about that next yeah dressing is really important um uh, dress conservatively. Uh, women, you should wear a suit, probably closed toed uh, shoes. Flats are okay, they can be appropriate as long as they're dressy. Um, maybe not spike heels. Don't go by the rule of wearing something to make yourself stand out. Um, your personality, your application is going to make you stand out. Your clothes shouldn't make you stand out. Um, it could be a fatal flaw if your personality isn't that great and then your outfit goes with it. Guys, you know, a formal suit, something that fits, make sure that you're comfortable in it, make sure that everything's tucked in appropriately and wearing a tie and um, dress shoes and no cowboy boots. Um, that doesn't work so well. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and, and just match. <laughs> match. There's nothing wrong with a white shirt. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with a white shirt. Nothing wrong with a white shirt. Yeah. So you mentioned financial clothing oh. organization. That was the other one you mentioned. So travel when you travel, it's probably good to carry your suit with you. Don't check it um, in case you lose it. Uh, that doesn't go so well if you have you know like major delays and you get in at four and you don't have your luggage. Um, but if you don't, don't panic. That does happen. And just be resourceful. Yeah, I would show up. Yeah. <laughs> if my if, suit was lost, I would. And yeah, if you. It could be a, it could be a great thing too. It can be. You <laughs> yeah. can make it into a good thing. You can yeah. own it. And I think that that's something that you yeah. said, like, just own. Just own it. Own it. So kind of with the travel piece, yeah. um, what about the dinners the night before and how to handle those dinners? Um, so there's a dinner the night before, um, and that's usually the environment where the residents show up. Sometimes there's going to be some faculty that show up. Um, things to look for in a program is if faculty are always there and staying, that might be a little bit of a, a flag for you depending on the situation um, and, and when you're looking at a program. Uh, there's going to be alcohol. If you can drink that's fine if you don't feel comfortable drinking that's totally appropriate don't feel pressure to drink don't drink too much don't get drunk um, I would probably say a one maybe two drink limit for over a four hour span kind of thing is probably the most appropriate the residents will be drinking and that's totally fine um, <laughs> but don't fall into that <laughs> trap of it being an opportunity for you to have a lot of fun you can have fun but just don't get trashed um and are they optional or would you recommend going to the dinners i would definitely recommend going yeah. okay. any um face time you can spend with people in the program is is good and um i say that uh, as you're trying to impress them but mm -hmm. you want to know about them too mm -hmm. you're, you're picking this program it's the rank list favors you um so you want to get to know these people um the residents you'll probably be working with the most closely. Those mm -hmm. are the people that are going to, some of them are going to turn into your best friends. Um, so that's that's when you get the most face time and the closest face time with all, all of those people, all those residents. Um, and you'll I be would, able to pick up if they're like disgruntled, mm -hmm. um, if they're unhappy. If they show up late, if, if there's show, only yeah. two people there. If no residents show up and it's only faculty there, mm -hmm. that's also that's like a, bad, yeah. a bad sign. We always have a good turnout, but... Yeah. I mean, we, we do, but... Not, not every happy. place does. Yeah. You know? And okay. that says a lot of things about the program. Again, the residents might not be happy. Maybe they're too busy. Maybe the staff just don't know at that particular program that they're supposed to be somewhere or, or won't accommodate that. But, um, yeah, you can learn a lot at the dinner. And if you can't make it, that's okay, too. Okay. Um, flights and driving times can mm -hmm. be bad, especially when you've got an interview one day and another one the next day yeah. somewhere else. It's hard to get there and on time. But it's okay to show up late to those things. Okay. Um, it's a little bit harder to show up late, but better late than never. It's it's kind of true there. Um, yeah. You might want to think about like getting like a larger group of friends 
than going out to dinner one night and like go to a nicer yeah. dinner and kind of practice eating. <laughs> okay. um, it sounds funny, but you know, just kind of you know, remembering how to act in a in a restaurant and try to mingle and have carry on like maybe try to do some kind of like mock dinner where you're asking you know people different questions of like mm -hmm. possible interview yeah, things and idea. that would kind of practice give you, your etiquette yes <laughs> think yeah. about it yeah because you're going to be carrying a conversation while you're eating and mm -hmm. how to juggle all of those things um throughout the interview trail how do you recommend handling the canceling of interviews as the season goes on Okay, so here's my advice to you. Once you submit your application and you're waiting for the interviews, you accept everything. This is golden rule, accept everything. And then eventually you'll get to a point where you'll not be getting interviews anymore. Then you can look at your calendar and see where everything is and then start arranging your schedule and then politely declining interviews later on. Um, be organized and you're gonna to need to respond right away there's no sitting on this invitation mm -hmm. like our program fills in about 24 hours mm -hmm. so you need to respond right away and pencil that in um, and be very careful to try and reschedule things um, and change dates around you might be able to do that but you really don't want to do that the likelihood of that working is gonna be pretty slim and you're gonna annoy the coordinator <laughs> and it's going to show that you're disorganized, and uh, you'll probably get waitlisted. Yeah, I would I would reiterate just kind of get it on the books, but because you're going to have to do it in the first few hours or yeah. day, even maybe a couple of days, depending on the program and how many people they interview and stuff. But get it on the books. But again, try to get the date that's going to work. It'll get messed up. I actually have had a lot of um, uh, people have been very accommodating when I've had to switch, um, but. Uh, it's all but, in how but, you did. Yeah. Tony Earlier is the, a very polite, charismatic person, <laughs> and he makes you want to do things for him. But not all people are like that. So be very polite and always yeah. very courteous and use your manners, especially yeah. when working with the coordinator. Definitely. Um, for canceling, if you actually mm -hmm. have to cancel, I remember there was a travel issue, and I wasn't going to make it to the last interview day at a place down south somewhere. And... Um, and it was a real, a real issue. I mean, mm -hmm. I, there was no way around it, really. I was actually going to try to drive, but it was too long to do it. And I felt terrible. But I called, and they're like, oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you treat these people like they are people and not just some program. And if, you're, if you, uh, surgery is a small world, and you don't want those people talking to the other people mm -hmm. that they know or trained with across town or across the state at some other program you're interviewing, saying how um, irresponsible you were or something sure. to that effect. Um, but yeah, just finish, follow through on them. Even if you're not gonna make it, your flight gets delayed. I mean, I've heard of people that show up at the end of the day, and that's one of their best, because, and they, they, they called the head, and you know, I'm late, with the flight, I'm stuck in Chicago, or wherever, wherever you get stuck. Um, turned out to be some show. of their best interviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they show up. So I've, I've heard of at least one staff in a surgical subspecialty staying until after six o'clock <laughs> until that person came to interview them, and they really wanted that person in the program. I think they went somewhere else, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good okay. interview. Um, yeah, so follow through on everything. Don't don't leave yeah. anything hanging yeah, out. Yeah, don't there. let any danglers. I mean, we've had people show up where they never responded, and they just came to an interview before, and that's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> um, or you don't show up, and then we get worried that something happened mm -hmm. to you. And we've literally had people in car accidents and. Mm -hmm and had you know major issues and so we are trying you know spending a lot of time trying to locate them and making sure they're okay it's winter time it's yep. hectic and you guys are traveling a lot so we worry about you which is great that they worry because <laughs> a lot of them do that says something about a program too when they do what might students want to ask about on interviews that might help them make informed decisions later during ranking i think one thing that's hard to find online is case deficiencies. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's like one of the first questions I asked uh, probably 80% of my interviews. What cases do your residents have difficulty getting? And honestly, even the biggest programs to the smallest programs, I mean, the residents all graduate for the most part. Um, you'll get the numbers, but, but it, can, um, it can guide you about what kind of program that is. 
you don't want to be struggling and getting 60% of the cases that you need to get. You want to be struggling in like one case. Do you, do you have trouble getting endoscopies? Fine, you know, we get them. But that's one thing. But if you're struggling with the transplants and um, liver stuff and pancreas cases and endoscopy and et cetera, that, that can raise some red flags about a program. And that's something, again, that's hard to find on all the mm -hmm. websites. Um, another thing I, I actually, that I loved about this program is honestly, I, maybe this is a little bit difficult for other people to understand, but um, for me is do they offer elective research? I mean, maybe that's not the best advice for every candidate out there, but to me that also said something about the program. They're interested in my goals, my, my career mm -hmm. goals and my needs. Um, it's very difficult for a program to offer elective research. It's probably a lot easier mm -hmm. just to say no one yeah, gets to right. take time off mm -hmm. or everyone has to take time yeah. off because it's the same number of residents moving through. It's extremely difficult, it I is. imagine, to keep tabs on the, like a, some going out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you try to keep it even because that's the way it works, but some going out and then some coming back in. But um, if they're willing to make take the time and make the investment to work harder for you and your goals, um, that, that spoke volumes to me. I didn't even care what their answer was. I just wanted to see what they said. Huh. Um, one of the things, so spinning off of that, one of the things, so if they have mandatory research, ask if it has to be basic science or if they're flexible in yeah. doing some alternative research like um, outcome systems research, clinical and uh, research and maybe tying it together with an MPH. I know some people have been interested in getting an MBA. Okay. So, you know, if they don't necessarily want to do basic science, don't assume that all institutes that have mandatory research, it has to be a basic science lab. Um, I think more and more it's becoming more popular to do some alternative uh, approaches too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hobbies, know them. Like, don't get all crazy with your hobbies. Don't stand out with your hobbies. Just have normal hobbies and be <laughs> able to talk about them. So if you like to read and you put that down, what's your favorite book? If you like to cook, what do you like to cook? Be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. Because again, it's it's hard to realize it now, but you are picking these programs too, and you want them to you want them to like you mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. not some alternative version yeah. of you. And you want to like them for them, and you expect them to be themselves, and they're probably more comfortable than you are because you're you're in the hot seat. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, don't give them an answer that you think they want to hear. Right. Because it's really easy to sniff out. And they probably don't care. Well, yeah. They, I mean, most of the answers, we don't even care what they are no, as long as they're true and yeah. heartfelt or you thought about them, depending yeah. on the mm -hmm. actual question. Um, just be yourself.